Hey guys, welcome to the 2020 Vital Max 250 shootout. Today we have six different 250Fs that we're gonna ride. Uh, we've ridden all these bikes at the intros, and now we're gonna ride them back to back and see how they do. First off, there's a couple bikes that really didn't change this year. The Yamaha and Suzuki both got updated graphics and that's it. Then the Husky and KTM both have suspension changes and they got the new airbox cover that opens up the airbox, a little more flow in there. Those bikes are, are relatively unchanged, but uh, a few upgrades. Then two of these bikes actually have pretty massive changes. It's kind of a toss up who has the most changes between the KX250 and the CRF 250R. The Kawasaki got a pretty much all new engine character uh, architecture. There's different suspension changes, all new fork and shock. So the engine is pretty much all new, a whole new architecture, a whole new design for that bike. On the Honda, that actually got the frame from the 450 and there's other changes to the head and the cylinder, different uh, combustion chamber. So lots of changes to both of these bikes and we're really impressed at the intros of these two bikes and really want to see how they compare to the, the other bikes in the, the shootout. We have a wide variety of testers for the 250 shootout since 250s are kind of aimed at, at younger riders. We do have a younger rider, more the intermediate to beginner skill level, and then a few of uh, the guys that we've seen before and some people in between. So let's go meet the testers. Ricky Yorks, I'm 31 years old, I'm six foot one, 200 pounds, 30 plus pro. Sean Klinger, 33, about 5'9", weight 215, Vet C. My name is Aiden Ferguson, I'm 15, 5'6", 126 pounds, and I race in the lightweight beat class. I'm Steve Boniface, I'm 36 years old, 5'7", 150 pounds, and I used to race pro. Kelly Yancey, I'm 39 years old, 5'4", 150 pounds, and I ride the women's expert class. Tim McMorrow, I am 29 years young, 6 feet 1 inches tall, and weighing in at 155 pounds, and I ride at an intermediate level. So let's get into the ranking of the bikes. In sixth place is the Suzuki RMZ250 with 35 points. Kind of no surprise here since the bike has been unchanged. Starting with the, the engine, it has a solid, torquey uh, bottom to mid-range power, but it's kind of slow revving, and then it really signs off on top. It, that being said, it's still you could still ride it, uh, short shift it. Uh, it makes good bottom to mid-range power, but it's just not on par with the rest of the class. What's up guys, Ricky Yorks, and I just got done with the 2020 Suzuki RMZ 250. The Suzuki has a great rider triangle, meaning that the handlebar, the foot pegs, and the seat is just a great combination of, of comfort, and, and right as soon as you throw your leg over the bike, you feel instantly at home, which, you know, coming out of the turns, it just has great power to, to, to pull even sometimes a higher gear than some of the other bikes. It lacks a little bit of top end power and comfort in the, in the rough stuff. The bike is a little bit on the firm side and then it, it transmits a lot of energy through the chassis to, to your hands and your arms and it takes a little bit more effort to ride just because of the uh, stiff chassis. Moving on to fifth place is the Husqvarna FC250 with 23 points. Overall, I think what kept this bike down into fifth for most of the testers was that it's pretty mellow in the power department. Um, there's two maps, which most of us liked the second map a little more. It's more aggressive. There's the new vintage airbox cover that lets the bike breathe a little better. Map one is very much a traction map for when it's really dry and slick or really muddy but both are a little bit down in power and pretty much compared to all the other bikes in the class. That being said, you can still ride it almost like a 125, rev it out, and it makes good power if you're aggressive, stay in the high RPM. This is Steve Boniface, yeah. and uh, I got to spend a lot of time on the Husky 250. 
For me, it feels like they made a big improvement on the stock bike uh, compared to the, the past few years. This year, I felt good right away. You can uh, put the bike where you want, feel the track, corner is really good. Um, the few things that maybe like I could work on the on the husky if I had more time, uh, work a little more on the suspension, and maybe a few few things like that. Other than that, good power, got everything you need on the bike, and uh, it's a fun bike to ride. What's going on? I'm Tim McMorrow. I like the Ergos. The chassis is super compliant. I never got any harsh feedback riding the bike. Super balanced front to rear. The suspension is pretty soft, but it was super plush, which I really, really enjoyed. It also had a really nice bottom end, bottom out support. I didn't feel like when I did hit the big G out for the harsh bumps, it wasn't like I just slammed in and I got some gnarly feedback through the frame of the bike. Moving on to the fourth place bike, it is the KTM 250 SXF with 22 points, so only one less point than the Husqvarna. The KTM overall has a similar feel to the Husqvarna. It's just, I would say, both in motor and suspension, it's further on the performance end of the scale than the comfort. So the power is more snappy, more aggressive. It still has the two maps. The second map is the more aggressive map, and it's preferred by pretty much uh, most of the faster and more intermediate riders. Some of our more novice riders or, or vet riders preferred map one. The power is really good when you ride it aggressively and you use the clutch a lot. It definitely rewards those who, who stay on the power longer. You can stay in each gear for a long amount of time. The bike has an incredible top end engine. Uh, if you can stay on the gas and, and you know really rev that thing out, it's probably the class leading power on top. It, it lacks a little bit of bottom end, requires a little bit more effort, you gotta be on your A game to keep the bike in the, in the sweet part of the power. The KTM suspension is, is really the, the best air fork I've ridden. The bike has, has great hold up, has great comfort, which is what it had been lacking in the past, is, is comfort, but KTM found a great balance of, of you know, finding something that works on, on the rough tracks and the big hits and, and also, you know, on the little chop. Hey guys, this is Kelly Yancey. Uh, today I rode the 2020 KTM SXF 250. A few things that I liked about the bike was it's super fast on top, it braked really well, and it handled really good at high speed. A few things that I didn't like about the bike is the bar seemed a bit tall and it didn't really uh, keep keep as good of a balance as I would like uh, going down the hill. Moving on to third place, that is the Honda CRF 250R with 19 points. Had a lot of changes for 2020. They worked on the head, changed the chassis and the, the swing arm and the frame. It did have a widespread of scores. One person put it first, some people put it fifth, and then it got a second and thirds. So it's kind of all over the place, but when you slot it all together, it gets third place. The power was a little bit lacking compared to the Yamaha and the Kawasaki and even the KTM. The power has very much uh, been moved to a, a mid-range to top-end power. It rewards the people that like to rev out, bounce off the rev limiter, ride aggressively. The MAP-1 has the most bottom end and the most torque feeling. Then MAP-2 is kind of the most mellow, and then MAP-3 is the aggressive map that really moves it into kind of that KTM territory where if you want to rev it as far as you can, it makes the most power up there. Three things that I really liked about it is I hopped on it and right away I felt super comfortable. Um, the ergonomics felt great. Everything was kind of right where it felt at home. The motor feels good. It's strong. It pulls all the way well throughout. The suspension is honestly really, really nice. The front to rear balance is amazing. Um, it's a bike I feel like you can kind of put it wherever you want and it just does what you want it to do. This bike got a lot of changes this year. It ended up being my first pick overall. They made it kind of a, a revving, you know, top end engine, but they gave away a lot of the bottom end. And then last year they added a little bit more, and this year they added even more back to the bottom to mid. So it's a really well rounded engine for me. And I like that it's free revving and snappy. They changed the chassis to that bike, and it could work better with the suspension. That could be a thing that's making the, the Honda better for me. Some people felt like it's, it's a little bit too rigid, it's too stiff for them or a little harsh, but uh, it also is on more of the performance side than comfort, and I think that goes along with the, the new chassis. Moving into our second place bike, the Kawasaki KX250. It has 18 points, which is only one less than the Honda, so still 
really close. Another bike that had a wide range of tester scores. In the power department, they did change quite a bit in this engine. It's a whole different engine architecture. It definitely moved the power into kind of a more mid to top end revving, quicker revving, snappy bike. So the throttle response with the power is on point and pretty much immediate throttle response from the Kawasaki. They have an all new fork, works really well, and uh, all new shock, so the bike is very balanced. Along with the chassis, there's a good amount of comfort that you get from the Kawasaki that really doesn't give up any performance. It's just absorbs some of the, the harshness from the track and doesn't transfer that to the rider. The mid-range, the top end, is really strong and it revs out much farther than it used to and it really changed the characteristic from a bottom to mid bike to a top end bike. If you ride aggressively then the Kawasaki can work well for you. Overall I think there's there's good chassis comfort. It's not a rigid or harsh feeling bike. I feel like you could slam through some rough lines and uh, it absorbs it pretty well. Just overall there isn't one thing that really puts the, the Kawasaki down for me it's just it isn't the best at a lot of things i would also say that handling wise i struggle to get the bike to turn it doesn't really want to initiate the turn very intuitively i have to really think about it and force it that's just going to put it down on the list for me but overall high marks across the board for the kawasaki kx 50. moving on to the first place bike it is the yamaha yz250f with only nine points Across the board, it is a really well-rounded machine. Most people didn't really have any cons to this bike other than some people still feel like it has a wider shroud area. It pushes their knees out a little bit. The power is probably the most torquey and it has the most bottom end, snappy, aggressive feeling, but it also revs into the mid range and top end really well. If you're an aggressive revving kind of rider or if you want a short shift and lug, it can be used both ways, which makes it a crowd pleasing motor. The KYB suspension on the Yamaha, both the 450 and the 250, probably the best suspension stock on any stock bike. The fork has kind of a magical balance of both plushness and hold up. There's performance and comfort. The fork and shock work really well together. Even though we had a wide range of testers, not very many of them made changes to the Yamaha. A few things that I liked about the bike was it is a uh, nice small cockpit, so it, it fit my size quite well. The power on the bike is great from bottom to top, and also corners excellent. For me, the best things on the Yamaha is the uh, suspension. I didn't have to do a lot of things, and the suspension feels just like very comfortable and feel very like uh, in comfort and safe on the bike. Almost feel like you're riding like something bigger than a, than a 250F. It doesn't rev as, as good as some of the other bikes, but for for me, for the way I like to ride now, and uh, and especially on a track like today, it really helps to have like a good uh, bottom and mid mid power. It's a very good bike, very complete uh, package and I, I didn't have to do like a, a lot on a bike or pretty much nothing on a bike actually and, and felt, uh, felt awesome on a bike. The Yamaha is predictable and really gives you confidence, gives a wide variety of riders confidence and that leads to you know, a bike that people want to put in first place. So, if you want a more in-depth look at each of these bikes, uh, what all the different testers have said and the dyno charts the weight charts of all these machines please go to vitalmax.com for the full story if you're on youtube please click the subscribe button thanks for watching